Welcome to episode 10 of season 4 of Help I'm a Pastor. And we're continuing today to look at the second part of a little series, the importance of working as a team. Now, just to recap from last week, um, basically the thesis of what we're talking about is the team that the Apostle Paul built with people like Timothy. And in 2 Timothy 2 verse 2, And the things that you have heard among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So have a look at last week's episode to look at how we broke the G12 vision down um, into, into that verse. And, um, you know, today, today we're going to continue talking about this. Let's pray. Father, we just come before and we just ask that your powerful hand would just be upon us. And uh, I just pray for every person and every ministry that is um, included in watching uh, this program, that your hand would be upon them and that you'd give them insight and revelation in terms of where to go. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, the, in, 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 in that verse, <clears throat> and what we were looking at last week, is that there are four generations. And these are four generations of disciples. So, you've got Paul, and then you've got Timothy. And we went through the generations last week. But the thing that I want you to understand is that when you, when you look at that breakdown in terms of the four generations, the first step that any disciple needs to make is to actually get to know Jesus. And this is something that's vitally important. If we're going to build real disciples, they've got to be disciples of Jesus. But in order for them to be a disciple of Jesus, they've got to know Jesus. And so the first step is having an encounter with Jesus. Now, if you want to know more about that, you can go and look at season two of Help, I'm a Pastor, 45-odd episodes where we give a, a general high-level overview of the vision. And within that, you can actually see the, um, the encounter weekend and a person coming to meet Jesus personally, you know, for themselves. So, so once someone has gotten to know Jesus and they've got a relationship with Jesus, the next step is the step where we now start reproducing ourselves, <clears throat> where we start leading others to Christ. And every single Christian is mandated to reproduce themselves. It's not just a few people in the church. Now, obviously, not everyone who's saved is going to do that, but you have the mandate. You have the calling of God. You don't have to wonder about the calling of God in your life. The calling of God for every single believer is to reproduce themselves. And um, many believers don't understand that they are called to reproduce themselves. I want you also to realize that if you're not reproducing yourself, then at the end of the day, um, you know, <laughs> um, you become a good listener in church. And many times the problem in church is that people become good listeners without any changes happening in their life. And if you look at the state of the church and you look at the scandals and all of those sorts of things, this is because people listen, they're good listeners, they say what an awesome sermon, or they criticize a sermon, maybe they make a video about the sermon, make a video about people's theology and all sorts of stuff, and they're so busy discussing their ideas about the Bible, but there's no changes happening in their lives. And that's why Jesus, he would preach to the multitudes. Multitudes of people would come to listen to him, but he preferred to focus on the 12. And, and the reason why he focused on the 12 rather than the crowds, because the crowds changed every single day. You know, and even within a church, when you see the crowds coming to church, the, the crowds change every single week. But the 12 went wherever he went. Even when he was sneaking off, you know, to get some alone time, if you want to call it that, the 12 were there with him. Even when he was about to be crucified, the 12 were, where, were there with him. They were there wherever he went, wherever he went. And this is something that as, as pastors or leaders in the ministry we need to understand, is that if you're really going to disciple people, if you're really going to get them to the place where they have a real relationship with God, 
You've got to have a relationship with God first. And your disciples have got to go wherever you go. And you've got to teach them to have their own relationship with the Lord. Now, when Jesus chose 12, the Father chose them. We read in in John 17, verse 6, he says, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. So just think about that carefully for a second. I've manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. They have kept your word. And this is what's important. And this is the crux of the G12 vision. When you have disciples, they're disciples that the Lord has given you. Therefore, when you're building a 12, you, you've got to have a relationship with God yourself and you've got to let him lead you and guide you in who you choose. When God gave Jesus a 12, <clears throat> it worked. And this is very important to understand. You cannot do the vision of God without a relationship with God. All right. You want to do a vision of God, you've got to have a relationship with God. Amen. And so we'll continue looking at this next week and, um, you know, looking at the fact that how do things go wrong, um, you know, in in the ministry. And um, we're also going to start talking about, you know, what the benefits are when you start working with a team of 12. But I really want to encourage you, you know, the vision works when we have the power of the Holy Spirit with us. The vision works when we allow God to lead us and guide us in the choosing of our 12. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we just come before you, and we just thank you and praise you for your word, for the power that it gives us. And I just pray, Lord, for your hand of blessing to be upon every single person that is watching this, that their ministries may grow and flourish in a powerful and mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just to remember, if you want to know more about the G12 vision, if you want to get involved, please email us at g12 at theactivechurch.org. That's g12 at theactivechurch.org. God bless. I'll see you next time.